to Berlin, Germany, and week four of the LEC Spring Split. The fight for the title is well underway, and the top teams will be looking to prove themselves in some fierce matchups, starting with Schalke No Fear versus Misfits Gaming. We saw the players leaving their respective shuttles on the way to the studio earlier today, looking calm, looking confident. Got to speak to them. They're all excited. They're all ready. They're raring to go. Now, I'm Daniel Dracos, joined by Indiana Frosker and Black Frosco. How you doing? I can't believe they let Euphoria take over the analyst desk. I know. We are very lucky, given the amount of vaguely inappropriate content we put out there. Now, before we get into today's topics, I do have one special thing to point out. Frosker, can you show the world what the front of your binder says? Frosk's super secret analysis. I'm sorry. I had no I idea just... you were going to do this. <laughs> I don't know why you wrote that. I wrote it because but people... But it brings me joy every time I see it. <laughs> so I thought I would share it with you, audience. They keep stealing my notebook. <laughs> I found Vettius' notes in here, Laurel's notes in here. I think Shox wrote in here at one point, so I was like, no, it's mine. We have a very like, communal notebook sense here, in the sense that we all forget notebooks and just grab whatever's in front of us as we run to the desk. But enough about that. Now, after six games, we do have four teams separating themselves from the rest of the pack. That is G2 Esports, Schalke, Vitality, Misfits, Four exciting teams, certainly, but G2 currently undefeated at the top. Now, as these top teams progress with some tough matchups this week, we did want to take a closer look at what makes them stand out from the rest, starting with G2 in first place. Now, Frost, there's a lot of ways you could describe this team. I would describe them as terrifying, personally, but I'm curious where you see them right now. The Uber team. Now, the crazy thing about G2 is normally when you see kind of a super team assembled, you have, like, one star player that can just, like, clutch out a moment and carry any sort of game. G2 are terrifying because they have five of those. Any single one of these guys can step up and say, no, 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 on brand power and superstar status alone, I'm going to be the hard carry. And they haven't even had to prove that yet. And they're, I mean, we've seen that they're mechanical monsters, right? Even these games where they fall behind, their team fighting and their individual skill is so good, it just feels like there's never really hope for who they're going up against. And that's before we even talk about the other aspect of playing against G2, which is drafting against G2, which is it even possible to win a draft against G2 right now? Uh, no, because you have no idea where things are going to go. Now, typically what they do is they like prioritize Caps pick, and then they grab their bot lane, and then they uh, flex their, their jungle top lane. But the fact is, is that they can flex champions in every single role. We've got Quadraflex with Silas now, uh, possibly on the, uh, the ban bench. G2 should be terrifying with that champion. And so you can't just beat them on the Rift. They beat you before you even get on Summoner's Rift in the draft every single time due to their creativity and their versatility. And the thing I love is you bring up these very specific points, like very often they're prioritizing this Caps first pick, but you're saying this in hindsight, because if, if we had looked back on this Karma top draft, we never would have been able to say that. And that just feels like every time there's going to be a new patch and a new change, you have to be so scared of this G2 lineup. Now, the next team is Schalke. This team came out swinging, started so strong. I don't think we expected them to be in this top discussion, at least not right off the bat, but they have been such a solid, such a consistent team. And frankly, I'm kind of bored with all the G2 hype. Like, we know that G2 are great. I'm all aboard. Get the Schalke here. hype train. I'm just so ready to ride this team all the way to the top. Schalke don't really have any sort of weakness. There's not a, a single area of their game plan that you can attack them on. They're strong in laning. They're excellent team fighters. Their uh, fundamentals of League of Legends and their vision game is super crisp and clean. They're just this beautiful, well-oiled machine that are never weak at any point. And the thing that I really have to hammer home here again is that this is such a young team. This is such a new team when you look at it. Now, I look back last season, you look at a guy like Odawamne, ridiculously inconsistent on Splice. So consistent now for the Schalke lineup. And then the other guy is Avadage in the mid laner. We've had, what, three rookie mid laners right now? Humanoid, little inconsistent. Obviously, Nemesis is, is kind of down in the dumps, but that's the fanatic story overall right now. But Avadage has is, is just been incredible in every game. And I would love to ride the Avadage hype train, but the name that you said first was Odo, and I that's the one that I want to grab quickly. We kind of talked about how terrifying G2 are in draft through their flex picks. Schalke are actually very unique in draft phase because they don't have to put a super high high priority on a pick like Urgot. On 9.2 and even more so on 9.3, Urgot's going to rise to kind of cream of the crop of, of uh, priority picks. Rest in peace, Akali. Just a few exactly. Rip Aurelia, Rip Akali. <laughs> and because Odo has the pocket cannon uh, counter pick, it means that Schalke have so much more flexibility in the draft around a very powerful pick that the rest of the league doesn't have the same comfort on. 
and it looks good for them overall. Now, the next team, of course, is Vitality. This is a team that has, once again, continued to evolve, has gotten past, I think, a lot of the preconceived notions of them just being win lane, win game style team, and they are showing us a, a pretty exciting evolution. They're basically the LPL LEC team. You take, like, LCK drafts, you take LPL aggression, you smack it together, and you get the LEC Vitality. Now, we are seeing an evolution of Vitality. This isn't the same kind of firecracker team where, you know, either it backfires on you or it blows up the enemy team. They're a bit more patient and controlled here, and that's what I like. I want to see what the potential ceiling of Vitality is. And when you talk about that fusion of styles, like the first team name that pops into my head is the Flash Wolves, because for the longest time, that's what we talked about, is this, this team that kind of fused two regional styles together that eventually became known as the Korean Killers. And honestly, it's just really exciting for me looking forward to see how Vitality are going to perform, how they continue to merge those styles. But the thing that I like is you say, oh, they're not the Firecracker team. It doesn't blow back on them. But they've still retained the positive side of that, which is the fearlessness that came with this Vitality lineup. And it's the unexpectedness. We talk about Clutch with G2. Vitality have that in spades as well. And they don't have necessarily the same brand power, the perks, the caps. They've got, you know, Jizuke is a big brown, but Attila's still not really getting the, the respect that he deserves. But it's the fact that when push comes to shove, Vitality can still find that six gear, those clutch moments, and make the impossible happen. Yeah, we, I mean, we saw it versus Rogue, right? When their backs were against the wall. I mean, admittedly against Rogue, right? There is criticism to be, to be thrown at them for that game. But when push came to shove, they were the kind of team that would make Never that say insane, die. <laughs> confident, tight TP play. And I mean, we're going to keep rewatching that moment because it was one of the most crushing defeats in the LEC thus far. But our final team is Misfits. Now, this is a team that is barely in the top four, admittedly, but had a pretty solid start early on. And it feels like snowballing really has been the name of the game. I love teams that are good at one thing, and they can basically throw everything else away as long as they're the best in the league at that one thing. And for Misfits, it's their early game. Their ability to springboard snowballs through Maxlore and where he targets on the map is exceptional, record-breaking. And it doesn't have to just be through the bottom lane. Hansama will also will always come to mind, but they've started recently to kind of change it up and putting more resources into Soaz in the top lane. And so now I just want to see the cherry on top for Misfits. Now make it so we can carry through bot lane, we can carry through top lane. Give Fevy some love. Start carrying and hard pushing through that mid lane. And of course, it's going to be a big week for Misfits when we look across all of these lineups. A lot of these top teams are going head to head in some incredibly explosive matchups. And for an extended preview, let's check in with Quickshot. That's right, Dracos. The top of the table is heating up. And this week, I want to focus on three matches that I think will help paint a clearer picture of how the teams stack up officially first, second, third, and fourth. Of course, the opening game of today, Misfits are taking on Schalke Nulfia. Now, Misfits with a record of four and two, Schalke five and one. Both of these teams led by their superstar AD carries. Of course, you can see Upset picking up a quadra kill in the clip behind me, and it'll be followed by Hunt Summer playing Lucian. It's interesting to look at Misfits and ask the question, can they take down the super hot Schalke? Schalke was surprised to many of us, and they have proven time and time again that they are a contender. Many people are putting them in the top two, and they can prove it by taking down Misfits today. Now, tomorrow, Misfits will once again gain another shot to prove where they rank in the top four. They will be playing against Splice. Splice is the only team outside of the top four that can prove they belong there. Splice are sitting with a record of three and three. They're currently fifth in the LEC standings. And I believe when you look at this matchup, Maxlaw and Xerse are going to be two of the pivotal players. These are two junglers that are returning to form from their 2018 season performances. And once again, we'll see, can Splice play with the big boys? Or will Misfits surprise us all and go 2-0? and oh? Now, finally, we have to turn our attention to the most exciting match of the day. It is Vitality challenging the number one team in Europe, G2 Esports. And it would be remiss of me not to talk about the mid lane matchup. Jazuke versus Caps. Not only do Vitality want to try and take down the undefeated G2, but can you find a more exciting mid lane matchup? The two best performing mid laners in the league and I bet you any money that Jazuke wants to clap caps. So check that out a little bit later today. We'll find out whether or not G2 will go 7-0 or whether or not Vitality will take them down. That's game five of today. Vitality versus G Sports, our match of the week. A great flawless duet. Jazuke lands it on three again, and they're just going to turn it around. Caps has to do so much work trying to get the shutdown goal. He hits Jazuke, but he's chunked out. But look at the burst damage. Caps isn't done yet. He's got one. G2 versus Vitality is our match of the week because G2 is on fire. They can already see the perfect split, but Vitality is in their way. They are prepared to do anything to take down G2 Esports.
Vitality is one of the strongest teams and we really want to beat them. Attila is very cocky and is really annoying, but they are winning, so he can. So we have to beat them. One, two, three, Vitality! They call me cocky, I call it confidence. G2 is a team that you just exploit by their own mistakes. Teams choose the unpunished, you're just waiting under your turret and they're gonna suicide and do crazy stuff, so I think that's how we're gonna win. Here comes Exile, the Paranoid Throwdown, he gets the fourth of the fight, and G2 Esports are at risk of being ace. You take down Caps, there's perks. You take down perks, there's wonder. Mickey X is making the plays, Yankos is right behind your back. How do you take down G2 Esports? Hunting Cajal, trying to get the shutdown gold. Cajal is worth so much money, but look at the first damage! Oh. Caps is not done yet! <laughs> He's got one! He's got two! I'm really happy that we get to show that we're good from behind. I'm really hoping that Vitality will show up because that's the practice we need, right? If we want to, if we want to go on the big stage. I think we have the same mentality on many things, and we sacrifice many things to be the best. Performance on stage rewards us. Fnatic get cleaned off the face of summoners ripped by Vitality. Caps and Jizuke, they follow a similar path. They immediately broke out in their rookie year, and they want to be the best in the world. Jizuke had a better performance at Worlds last year, but he's going to have to bring it to the LEC to beat Caps. We're going to be the ones that are going to give G2 their first loss, and they're going to be sleeping at night thinking about how they lost against us. Attila is the kind of player who wants to show perks that he should go back to the mid lane. If both teams peak for winning lanes, and both teams do, then it's just about raw skill. And I think my team has a better raw skill than Vitality. These two teams, they don't just want to beat you, they want to style on you. And this is great for Vitality, they're just dancing around the fight perfectly! Three players go in, the blast code used, Kobe knocks onto the one side of it, hold back, Kobe down! G2 is the undefeated team, and that is exactly why I think Vitality has a big chance to win this game. Vitality loves being the team that goes against the best team in the league that they shouldn't be able to beat. RNG, Samsung, G2 is next. Gets me going every time I see it. Trevor already said it, but Caps versus Jazuke, such an incredibly hype matchup. Two best mid laners in the league. Jazuke at one point might have been number three, but Perks is in the bottom lane now, Frostgrant. And the good news for us, for everyone at home, is that you can watch from Perks's perspective, rather Perks's perspective, excuse me, Caps's Caps perspective, perspective, new mid laner, old mid laner, bear with me. Caps's perspective, twitch.tv slash Riot Games 2 is the place for that game five, and it's going to be an insane matchup. The reality is, is that this may be a possible preview of our LEC spring finals as well as one of the most hype and top of the table League of Legends that we'll see so far. It is absolutely going to be incredible but for now I'd like to look at uh, the other part of the league. Of course we look at the top four. Let's take a look at some of the other teams. We're going to play a little game called Stuck or Rising. Now we picked out three teams, SK, Excel, Esports, and Fnatic. And based on their performances so far, we're going to discuss if these teams are stuck, if they've kind of hit a wall or a ceiling and they can't get any better, or if they're going to be rising up and showing us a little bit more. And I want to start with SK. Okay, so I think SK had a, a bit of a boosting job by Fnatic. We didn't necessarily know where Fnatic were going to rank, so SK came in hot and heavy. They take down Fnatic, and everyone is buying and into we the ready. SK stock. We were ready. We saw it, and then Fnatic continued to play, and we might have realized that it wasn't quite as big it, as we it thought it was. It takes some of the wind out of their sails. Now, good things can still be said about SK. You know, you still have self-made. And anytime you hear this team, it's self-made, self-made, self-made. He is baby Yankos. The problem is, and why I think SK are stuck and that they have plateaued, is that no one else is stepping up. I need Whirlib or Crownshot or Dreams or Period or just a different name to keep them in the conversation if they're going to continue to rise and be playoff contenders. And honestly, Period is a name that I heard so much in the preseason because it felt like a lot of people counted this guy out, but I heard that he was going to be fantastic. Is this who you look at because you list three names. Is there anyone in particular you really want to see step up on this lineup? I mean, Pyrian's got a lot of compliments from other mid laners. Nemesis in particular was really singing his praises. But for me, I actually think you should look towards Whirlib. We see so much potential and so much hype there. But unfortunately, if he's still on tank duty, if he doesn't grab one of these carries like the Jaces, the Urgots, and the Kennens, again, they're just going to run out of steam. And now I want to see what they can do this week on stage. Of course, she'd be stepping back. Broken Shard now up on stage. So we'll see maybe the team's strategy changes a little bit, how things are going to work up. But next up, we've got UK Underdogs Excel. Now, before you say anything, Frostgren, I'm worried you might be a bit of a pessimist, I'll be honest, on this segment. I do want to say that this team beat Misfits last they week. They did. And now there was a Baron Steel. 
I will, I will, you know, take a step back and say that. But at the end of the, this was a really solid game. It was a good draft, and overall, I, I personally feel like Excel are on the rise. And while I think that Excel and SK are sitting kind of in similar tiers or power buckets, if you will, I think they're there for very different reasons. SK, you're not seeing that same development or growth week after week, but with Excel, you are. You're starting to see more cohesion with the team. You're starting to see them try different strategies, have more creative drafts, and it is paying off. But unfortunately, the rest of the league is also continuing to surge around them. The likes that Fnatic are picking up wins, that Origin are picking up wins. I think that Excel are stuck right now and that they'll be playoff contenders, if not the playoff gate. They won't necessarily be champions, but they could decide who the champions are. You need to have consistency to beat this team and you cannot overlook them. Absolutely not. I feel like Cajal has been improving. And I like that you're at least willing to credit them as that, that sixth place, that kind of gatekeeper, making sure that those other teams do not get into the playoffs. And for me, that makes uh, Fnatic a little bit of an uncomfortable matchup as these two teams are going to go head to head in our second game of the day. But Fnatic is a team that I feel like we have to talk about. Now, they're the reigning champions. We, we, you want to sing their praises. You want to come off that world's performance and say that this team is going to be the best. But after so many weeks of failure, it's a tough sell. Now, you at home, you guys have been tearing up the, the Twitter votes. Now we want to see what you can do in the YouTube and Twitch chat, respectively. You're going to type stuck or rising. I want to see what you have to say. Are Fnatic stuck or are Fnatic rising up? And as we get your votes tallied, as you guys start to spam in the chat, Frostgarn, how are you feeling? Is this, is this Fnatic lineup stuck? Are we, are we ever going to come back to the glory days of, of second place at World Fnatic? I mean, it's about the context. Uh, frankly, because Fnatic are bottom of the barrel, the only way to go is up. And I do have faith that Fnatic will climb up the standings, so technically they should rise. The question is, how far? Is this going to be a top three fanatic? Not at the rate that they're going, but I think eventually people need to default to trust. You know, this is an organization that has gone through, what, five different rosters, has six or seven uh, different championships, so ultimately they have a recipe for success, and it's just about figuring out how many cogs that they need to change out before they can start printing out championships again. And I see it. Uh, I know, <laughs> and I want to talk about this audience, because this is an interesting trend. To be, wait, wait, to be fair, it is much easier to spell stuck than it is to spell rising so maybe that's maybe a legitimate a thing i'm i'm lazy i've been in twitch chat you take you copy but you're copy pasting so only one person really has to type it right so but i want to say that this is surprising because we do not often see the fan vote turn against fanatic in any way shape or form and it feels like fanatic have earned so much trust from being successful but maybe they've started to burn through it now and that's the reality of the situation you know at what point does the the trust bank that fanatic have built up on their brand name organization run out when is there a drought is this the final nail in the coffin if they lose to excel does everyone just abandon Fnatic at this point? All right. Well, we're going to get more insight on these teams tonight as we kick off week four of the LEC Spring Split with Misfits versus Schalke. Two exciting games to start and cap off the day. And, of course, I feel like immediately, right after this Fnatic discussion, my eyes just go right to Fnatic XL. I think you said nail in the coffin. That's exactly what Kieran said from XL. He said, look, you don't want to beat them while you're down, but uh, you, you take those wins if you can get them. I think that's a matchup that we have to look at. Everyone just wants to put it on the resume. I beat the world <laughs> finalist Fnatic. Fnatic. It doesn't matter what the context <laughs> is. You don't see the asterisk. You just want that. But looking at the schedule, I mean, there's great matchups across the board. It just speaks to the fact that the league is so stacked right now, not just on the top end, our top four, but also in that meaty middle of the pack. Yeah, it is very meaty middle of the pack. But of course, because a lot of these things are so close, predictions have been a bit up in the air. I, I will say some of us have done better better than just others. Just brag. Just do it. And well, the race for superior analysts is heating up. There's only, you know, it's only a four point difference, but uh, me and my close friends, Twitter, have teamed up to take down uh, these so-called analysts. Uh, you'll notice that that's me and that's Twitter, bottom and top, protecting the sacredness of superior analysts with 22 points apiece. And you'll notice our friend StatsBot, the merciless, quickly catching up on you. Frostcorn, are you nervous? Uh, I'm not worried about StatsBot, but Today is my day to take down Twitter. Uh, I got it, what? I got Vitality over G2, and I have Schalke over Misfits. I have never seen such a close bet in Misfits over, over Schalke. I think Misfits scraped in at the very yeah, the end of our last minute, vote. and the other one was interesting, too, is that Fnatic won the fan vote by, like, it was a 6% difference. 47% for Excel, 53 for Fnatic. So once again, we look at those votes. Usually Fnatic just win every single time. Surprising, once again, to see people turn against them, that the fandom is not carrying through over the, the poor results. But interestingly, 
Vettius was supposed to be here to call us both, both fools. He is sick today, so I will say why. We are both predicting Vitality. Now, we both because we think that Vitality can beat you, beat you too, but if you saw Euphoria, also because there is a bet on the line. There are some stakes on this game. So for whatever reason, you aren't excited about G2 Vitality. One, you're crazy. But two, we have some extra stuff that may get you excited. Now, in the event that Vitality win, our good friends Norskaren and Upset will be taking Pi to the face. But... On the off chance that Underdogs G2 come out and take the victory, <laughs> really, Underdogs for sure, uh, we will get yeah hit with pie in the face. You'll all be able to watch it at home. High risk, high reward, folks. You, you got to understand, we're putting ourselves out here for the entertainment of the people. I made a promise to, to Jacob, to Yamato, that I would never uh, doubt Vitality again. They are the LPL team of the LEC, so I have to stand behind my boys. Uh, and jokes on them, I just really want some pie. So. Okay, well, there you go. We'll, see, we'll find out if you get your sweet I treat, like I Apple. guess, after game five. <laughs> Apple pie. All right. <laughs> well, looking, of course, at the meta, a lot of things are going to shake up in 9-3. We're not there yet, but Silas the Unshackled is joining the LEC this week, and it's already looking like he will be high priority in professional play. He's shown up in CB Law, LJL, and Super Liga Orange as well. That is the Spanish League, if you're not too familiar with your regional names. Now, if you want a basic overview of what this champion is going to do, you can check out the champion spotlight. But for today, I'd like to take a look at what we can expect from this guy in professional play. Now, his biggest strength, this may not surprise you, is his completely loaded kit. This man has healing, wave clear, CC, a dash, and a shield attached to a stun. That's one ability. That's the E. And all of that is before you take into account this unique, game-changing, alt-stealing ability that is his own ultimate. The potential to take away from enemy champions is truly powerful. But the important part of this kit that I think we should focus in on is the CC, because CC is always going to push a champion up in pro play. It gives him both setup for junglers if he's laning, and it also gives his laner setup if he is the jungler. Reliable CC is a consistent staple of good champions, and Sila is really no exception here. Arguably, though, the most important strength of Silas is his nature as a flex pick. He's so incredibly strong right now that he's getting played across a wide variety of roles. Zanzara played him in Super League of Orange as a jungler. Solo Q Caps is playing him mid. Kasing has been playing him support. We've even seen a ton of different top laners try him up there on the top side of the map. So at this point, Silas is being played in four out of five positions, which just makes him incredibly valuable in any draft. We talk so consistently about the importance of flex picks, and Silas is definitely an incredible flex picks. Now, weaknesses are the opposite side of the coin. Now, this one is a little bit tough. Of course, he's going to have the same weakness that every champion has, which is that you can just ban him, which, to be frank, is what I expect most teams to do. But if you do decide to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, uh, he still has a few things wrong. There are still a few moments that you can exploit this champion. At the end of the day, he's still a melee range mage, which means that there are some clear windows to punish. If he blows his cooldown in any kind of sloppy fashion, you can just get on top of him and you can kill him. They are not the largest windows, but when they are open, you jump in there, you kill the Silas, and he's not nearly as terrifying as he once was. Now, the last piece of the Silas puzzle is his ultimate hijack. This ability is absolutely nuts, as not only does it steal ultimates away, but it turns AD ratios into AP ratios. So just to make sure that Silas can always dish out a ton of damage. The ones we're highlighting here are Galio, Pike, as well as the Scion. Those are some of my personal favorites, but from talking to pros, things like Karthus are terrible to play against. If he steals a Lucian ult, if he steals a Lissandra ult, a Sejuani, the list goes on and on. And as it turns out, friends, if you're picking a champion in professional play, it usually has a very high impact ultimate. Not you, Jace, but everyone else, <laughs> high impact ultimate. And so the fact that Silas can pick from five different ones at any point during a game is just absolutely insane. So you're basically telling me that if G2 Esports were a champion, <laughs> that they would be Silas. Yes. Got it. Yes, this is G2 Esports. We will, if G2 win Worlds, this will be like the sixth skin. They won't even have a sub. They'll just give them this skin due to the consistency with the play style. Now, the first team hitting our rift tonight uh, may not be the expected G2 Silas comparison, but it is Shalk and Misfits, and this is a huge matchup to start off the week. We talked about these teams earlier, and of course, both these teams looking impressive so far, but a big defining matchup for Shalka and for Misfits. Now, when I was really looking at this matchup, it felt like Misfits, you know, I was aligned with Twitter that Misfits Misfits felt like the favorite going in, but I started to look at the strength of schedule and I'm backtracking a little bit. I feel like Misfits are actually facing the gauntlet now. They have to face Schalke, Splice, and G2 as their next three games, and they just came off of their loss against Vitality. So for me, Misfits actually haven't proven themselves that they're in top four. Whereas on the other side, Schalke, I think, come in actually heavy favorites here because they have proven themselves against top teams. And the good news here, though, is that if you are a Misfits fan, you can look at this matchup and you can think, 
hey, if they're able to beat this one, then it inspires a lot of confidence for the tough opponents to come. Because as you highlighted, strength of schedule is going to be very difficult for them. Losing here, though, puts them so very quickly on the back foot. And on the other side, we have got the stampeding Schalke lineup, who are looking to continue that four-game winning streak. Now, they already took down Vitality. They want to take another big fish out of the water here today. And it feels like they're all eyes set on that matchup versus G2 in Week 6. But I don't think they can count Misfits out. And it's just about how you can survive the early game against Misfits. Against Schalke, you're then looking at guys like Ignar and Memento. Because you know that Misfits are kind of going sprinting out of the gate and just try to sucker punch you in the first 15 minutes, we're really relying on Schalke's uh, duo system between their support and their jungler to absorb a lot of that pressure. All right. Well, to get more insight on Schalke, let's head over to Medic and their coach. Thank you very much, Dracos. I am joined by Dylan Falco, head coach of Schalke 04. Now, we see Schalke come off to a 5-1 and one start at the beginning of this split. Did you expect to be doing this well? Um, as soon as we started practicing as a team and I saw the roster, what it was, what was put together, I think I knew the ceiling on this team would be extremely high like, and be able to kind of contest for the top positions in the league. Um, it wasn't until we actually started working out our mid game and how we're playing together and I saw the synergy that I really new but yeah actually i'm not too surprised not too surprised of yeah. course schalke made a made a podium in summer last year is it too early to be looking at like podium positions maybe even first place at the end of the split i think i would be confident in saying that at this point in time we are definitely one of the uh, one of the top teams and looking at a podium position would be realistic if we were to play right now but i do think there's so much room for other teams with really talented rosters to improve over the course of the split that i don't want to look too far ahead right now, yeah. And also, you can't be too confident this early on in the split. You never know what's going to happen come playoffs. Uh, we've seen you're going to play up, up against Misfits today. They've kind of been on a little bit of a slump in the last couple of weeks. What is your game plan coming into the matchup today? Okay, so I think, obviously, Misfits have a really talented roster. Um, they were held at as having, like, so much talent in every single position. Um, although, do I think that they've only really truly won games where they've had huge out-of-control leads in the first few minutes of the game. So we put a lot of focus into our first few minutes just to make sure the game will be stable. And I think if that is fine, from seeing what they've shown so far, we just kind of outclass them as a five-man unit uh, later in the game. Well, good luck in the game today against Misfits. That's it from us here. Over to you, Dracos. All right, not confident enough to 100% lock down that top three spot, that podium spot, but confident enough to come out and say, hey, we survived the first few minutes and this is no problem. We just outclass them as a team. That's what I like to hear from a team's coach. Of course, we got to talk about how team, both teams are going to approach this. We heard a little bit of insight from Dylan himself, but let's talk a little bit about what Misfits is looking to do. Are you all in on what Dylan Falco has a read for the Misfits strategy of just going in on the early game? Uh, yeah, that's 100% what they do, but they can pick where they hit you in the early game. More often than not, it is through the Han Sama and the Gorilla Lane. This is specifically looking at Max Lore as that big trigger point to pull it, but he's recently started throwing resources towards the top side. And again, I think that cherry on top for Misfits is now how they can get Febvin into this, you know, spring board 15 minute sprint that misfits just come out and sucker punch teams with absolutely and what we see here is the playing around bottom strategy now admittedly this is the most successful one but also the one that you know that dylan falco and Schalke are going to be ready for so misfits find themselves in a tough spot do they do what you said they do where they try to outclass in this one area where they believe themselves better or are they going to mix it up today we will find out but on the opposite side Schalke and their synergy a lot of that feels like it comes down to playmakers in ignore and memento these two as a duo have been just so incredible in the early game and i just want to echo what Dylan is saying and that if they can survive that first 15 minutes, which again, you're looking for Ignar and Memento to do to absorb a lot of that pressure. Early game, it's all about these two for Schalke. Schalke are so good into this 20 to 25 minute pocket. You look at all of their gold graphs, they shoot off. And it's because what they do is they paper cut you in the lane phase, slowly bleed you out with small advantages, and then they team fight you. And they are the best team fighting team in the LEC. And it's across the board. It's not just upset. It's not just Abadage. It's not just Odo, it's the whole goddamn package. And really, when you look at this replay, this is one of those games where they were slowly bleeding out the opposition and they find one of these opportunities to find a good team fight easily transitions into that victory. Earlier today, when you we were talking about defining kind of the top four teams, one of the big topics that kept coming back up was the draft and how when skill is a little bit more even, the draft becomes more and more important because you can't rely on someone just rolling over the top of another lane. As we get closer to this first game, Frostgren, what do you expect to see in this draft? I actually think Misfits have some of the most clever drafts that have ever 
everyone in the LEC. I think that their ability to use uh, Callista and make the Alistar pick more fundamental is something to look at. But right now, I'm just curious, will Misfits try to hard win through Hansama and Gorilla, or will they play more towards the top side of the map? And can Shalka just decide if they're going to skill check on the early phase for Misfits? Do they just decide to play scaling, say, past 20 minutes, they can't win anyway, or will they just get knocked out? Either way, I'm ready. I love Clash of Styles. I love Clashes of Top Teams, and it looks like we have both here. It's time to kick off Week 4 with a matchup that can turn the tides here in the LEC. It is Schalke. For